Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we got a really exciting episode. GMT watches and dive watches are really cool. They allow you to tell the time in multiple time zones and they're pretty robust. Often somebody's first proper watch is a dive watch and today we're going to talk about how to build the DIY watch club's dive watch with an extra function called GMT. This allows you to tell the time in multiple time zones. So Follow along with us. It's kind of a long video and it's warts and all. You know, some of my mistakes I put in there because I wanted you to see how you would be able to do this if you decided to take this project on. It takes about two hours and you wind up with a really cool watch. So join us and enjoy. Thank you. So previously we did an unboxing. We looked at the tools and we went through how to build uh, the pilot watch. Now we're going to look at building the GMT watch. So the watch kit is basically the parts that are in this tray. So let's look at them all. I'm going to move the tray out of the way and just bring everything in. First, most important, um, these are uh, cards that um, give a link to the instructions. So in here um, there's a, a card and it basically um, will have the link to how to build the Diver Series watch. So that's super important. Don't miss that. Once you register, you can go to your profile and see which products you've actually registered for. Um, we're going to build the GMT watch, so I'm going to basically visit plan here. And off we go. Get my camera ready. We can get a free upgrade. Pretty cool. Uh, so we are going to start with our uh, build, just following the instructions on the site. I'm not going to go through the instructions on uh, the DIY Watch Club site any further. Um, you know, you can check them out if you get your watch. So let's do the build. Okay, before we start, get your finger cuts on. We don't want to get any kind of grease on the case or on the parts as we're building. Um, we want to keep everything as clean as we can as we put it together. So let's look at the parts that come in the kit. Okay, let's start with the bezel. Nice black and red bezel, uh, still in the packaging. I'm not going to take things out of the packaging until I'm actually using them. And if they're not in packaging, like uh, the case, I'm just going to make sure that I'm handling this with finger cuts. So the case comes with um, a nice chapter ring inside and also uh, you'll notice that the stem is cut to length and we've got a crown. Um, it's a transparent back or a sapphire crystal back so you can see the mechanism working. Uh, next we have our Seiko mechanism. Um, again, still in the packaging. Um, this box has hands and um, also uh, the uh, dial, which is going to be very important for us. A couple of additional tools that we have. One is the GMT hand setting tool. It's got a slightly different diameter to the other hand setting tools that come in the kit. There's going to be a screwdriver for the bracelet and this little washer. Uh, so we've got everything we need. Uh, that's everything that's in the kit. Okay, so as we get started, we're going to basically take the case apart so that we can start working on the watch. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out the crown. Because this is a diver watch, it, it has a screw down crown and that helps with water resistance. So I'm just going to unscrew that gently pull it out. Okay. And then next I'm going to open the case back. Now the kit comes with a pretty good case opener. I like using this ball partly because I don't scratch things with it. Um, if you watched the last video, you may have noticed I slipped. Uh, not the end of the world, but and I want to put my components face down so that they don't get dust. 
Okay, the next step is going to be to remove the gasket. And I'm going to pop that in a baggie. And that will hopefully stop getting dust and debris on it. I'm going to just kind of get it in here. We have that in our baggie. Next, there's a movement holder. So I'm just going to pull that out. And this is attached to a chapter ring. I'm going to flip this so I don't get dust on it. Okay, and I have a, a washer for the chapter ring too. So I'm going to pull this off. And similarly, I'm going to put these two in the baggie. Okay, so here are our parts. We've got the case front, case back, gasket, movement holder, stem and crown, and the chapter ring. Okay. Okay, let's remove the movement and give it a quick wind to just make sure everything's working. So we very gently open the case that it comes in and we can just lift it out by the stem that's installed in it. And put it on our work surface and we can hold it by the edges. So we'll do that. And I'm going to wind it with my other hand without the finger cuts on it. So uh, let's give it a quick wind and see where we're at. Yay! As we can see, uh, the movement is operating with a little wind. So the next step is going to be to remove the stem. So we're going to want to remove the stem and crown that it was shipped with. There is a little lever on the watch. So let's just push this out of the way. And you can just see it in here. We just depress down on this little area here. And we can pull out the stem. Now we want to put the stem that came with the watch in the case. And we, <laughs> we're going to put that in the mechanism. Okay, so we're going to replace the stem with the one that came in the kit. And it's going to go back exactly where the other one came out. So um, let's try and get this focused for a second. Okay, so you can just see here, that's the hole that the other stem came out. Okay, so we're just going to gently sort of Finesse this in. Okay, and then eventually it's going to click. You can check you've got it in by giving the watch a little wind. And you can hear that's winding nicely. Once you've checked that you can wind the watch, you can pull out the stem. Um, to the time setting function and you want to make sure that you're not in the date setting function and you can see that we're actually able to set the time now you see those gears moving inside and what's going to happen in a second is the date will flip over okay so I'll just keep turning this you can see now that the date is flipping. Okay, so that's now installed correctly. If it's not working, um, you know, if you are not going in straight, uh, just pull it out again and uh, reset it. But it does go in, you feel a click when it goes in, and you know you've got it in the right place. So, pretty cool. All right, I'm going to put this face down. 
they don't want to do anything that's going to restrict. Now, you'll see that there's a hacking function on this, so um, if you look very carefully, you'll see that the watch has stopped. If I um, push the crown back into the winding position, you can see that our watch starts up again. So pretty cool. Okay, remember this little spring? We are going to locate that on top of the hour hand. Okay, so uh, we're going to need to turn everything over. And the spring really wants to go, I don't know if you can even see this, but there's a bend in it. And you want the bend in the middle to be facing upwards. Okay, that's the top side of the spring. So I'm going to grab this with my tweezers. Probably easiest to just put it out. These poly bags have an alarming tendency to want to eat components. Okay. My spring. Come right up here, see if we can focus this. Ah, the joys of filming while you're trying to focus with small put Oh boy, where did that go? Yep, the spring sprung. It disappeared, went about five or six feet away actually. So it is a spring. Um, I was crawling around on my hands and knees for the next 20 minutes trying to look for it. Eventually I found it around the corner. Um, so great news, didn't have to send off for another, but be careful with small parts. Fortunately, I found the spring on the garage floor. One of the things about watchmaking is you need to be really patient. And if you lose a part, it's going to be somewhere. I strongly recommend, and I don't do this, but if you have the ability to work on a desk with sides in an enclosed area, and maybe even where an apron. The apron will help you catch parts. This actually went, um, this little spring in the tweezers went maybe five feet away from here. So there's some lessons there. Um, what I'm going to do right now is just clean it up with Rodica and then we'll carry on with the build. I'm going to just hold this a little bit and dab it with the Rodica. Um, the reason that I'm putting a little bit of weight on here is just to avoid it going on another excursion. Uh, we don't want that to happen. Okay. I'm going to expect it with my loop, and I think we're good to go. So let's get set up, carry on. Being super careful this time. spring on top of the hour wheel. Our dial is a two-piece dial, so I'm just going to set this to one side for a second, and I'm going to get the dial parts out. Okay, they come in this box, and they're in little cardboard packets. Uh, we've got the dials, and the hands. I don't know which is which right now, so it's going to be like opening up presents to your birthday. Okay, so this is a part of the dial. And look at that. The first two we opened were the ones we wanted. Okay. So let's have a look at the sandwich dial. It's very important to avoid handling um, even with finger cuts, the, the dial, if, if it's all possible. So they really need to just be handled at the side. So what's going to happen is you can see that um, there is at the 3 o'clock position the date, and then we've got two holes for the dial feed to go through. Um, so we're going to sandwich these together. So first of all, I want to get them out. 
So let's go ahead and try and do that. Probably like everything else, it's going to stick to the plastic. That's okay. You can sort of wiggle it from side to side. And I'm just going to push it out here. Okay. So this, this sort of has my loom on it, I think. And it gives a 3D effect when it's assembled, which looks quite nice. Um, it, it's a pretty effective way of um, sort of getting a 3D effect on the dial. Um, expensive watches are going to have you know, uh, applied markers at being five minute positions. Um, so, again, you know, I, I really appreciate the DIY Watch Club design um, because they are able to get um, what are effectively some fairly nice high-end features in uh, some relatively inexpensive uh, watches. So what I'm going to do here um, is actually rest this on uh, the plastic it came in because I don't want to damage this. And after all that talk about, you know, don't touch the dial because I'm touching the dial. I want to grab this with the tweezers careful I'm not going to touch it anywhere that's visible and I kind of want to line this up on that foot the three o'clock marking okay great so it gives me a dial I don't want to use the tweezers on the dial face because you run the risk of scratching it Okay, so it's going to be tricky to actually install this. So let's bring the watch in. Now, I can use a dodge to tell where the 12 o'clock position is because I have my stem and crown installed. Okay, and then what I want to do is basically line everything up with those two holes that I've got in here. Okay, so let's uh, play gently, get on the edge here. Ah, that's what I didn't want to do. Okay. All right, let's get it all set up again and ready. To Okay, the dial is going to fit into two holes. There's one here and one over here. And um, basically what you want is the stem at the 3 o'clock position. So, here we go. And, of course, our spring has run away again. So, I'm going to reinstall the spring. The spring is... To escape a lot. Okay, so you got the spring back on. And now we want to get our dial. Okay, we've got it basically assembled as one piece unit. I'm trying desperately hard not to touch it, and of course, I keep touching it. So let's get it back together again. Okay, and we're just going to guide. Uh, the posts on the dial, which you can just about see. Okay, those posts need to go on the holes that I pointed out. So I'm actually not going to film doing this because it's a bit fiddly and I want to get this close up so I can use the loop. Uh, so I'll get this done and come right back. Okay, so that's the dial assembled. Looks pretty good. Um, unfortunately, I think I uh, when I was looking for the spring that fell out, I think I may have got a little bit of gunk on the cards, and then I touched the top with the cards. So I'm just going to clean this up with the Rodico. Rodico is magical stuff. Um, I 
think that's looking pretty good at this point. Okay, so now we're going to get to the hands. Okay, so before we can get to the hands, we are going to place the movement into the movement holder. Uh, there's actually, a, as you can see, a slot where um, the crown and stem are going to go. And it's also um, kind of tapered, so we want the small side down. So what I'm going to do is lift this up. Oops. Okay, you're going to grab the movement holder, the tweezers, and then I'm just going to try and drop this in. Gently, 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 gently. Avoid. Um, just going to touch the movement holder. Okay. Down. And there we are. We've installed the movement into our movement holder. The first hand we're going to try and install is the GMT hand. And I have this right here. So we're going to cut it out of the packaging. DIY Watch Club provide two hands in case you mess up. Uh, we're going to try and avoid messing up. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do though before we even start this is I want to pull this out to the date setting position. Okay, and we're going to adjust the hands until the date flips over. Might take a while, but okay, we can see that our date is flipping over. Okay, so that hopefully is a 12 o'clock position. I want to put this down here without putting any pressure on the stem because this is quite a large crown and as I push down with the hand setting tool, uh, <laughs> I don't want to damage it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to open up the packaging and pull out the hand. I'll be right back. So I just use a pair of scissors to cut down the side of the packaging and then I should be able to get my tweezers in here or just drop this out. Either way, it doesn't matter too much. Don't want to bend the hand. Okay, the hand you can see one side isn't finished and there's a little flange on it. Um, so that's the bottom. Uh, sometimes it's easier to use a piece of rotico to, to manipulate the hand. So I'm going to do that this time around. Yeah, just drop that down, pick it up with the rotico. And we're just going to try and get into position. So I want the hand setting tool. Okay, we have a, a special hand setting tool for the GMT. And it's a little, the aperture is a little wider. Okay, I don't know if we can focus on that. Hopefully we can. You can do it. Okay, moving on. I have to take my word for it. Okay, and what we're going to do is just get this into position. And it's the hand setting tool just to get it pretty level. We want that at the 12 o'clock position. Doesn't look like it's in there yet. That looks pretty good to me. Don't want to use a lot of force here, but you do want to make sure that it's it's in there. And you also want to make sure that you're pretty level on it. Okay. All right. 
Alrighty. And I think we're in good shape there. I'm just going to look at it from the side. I don't know if you can really see that, but I'm trying to make sure that it's parallel with the surface of the dial, which it isn't quite. So I'm just going to. Okay, I went a bit too much then, so come back a bit. It's a lot of trial and error in this. You obviously don't want it to be sweeping on the surface. I seem to either go too far or not far enough. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. We'll test it in a bit when we actually Right side the hands. And there we go. Okay. Next up, the arm minute hands. Um, so I'm just going to do them and then come back. Okay, all three hands are installed now. And we can do a little check to make sure that day changes at midnight and that the hands are not fouling each other. Uh, let's just do a complete rotation of 24 hours. And there we go. Two o'clock in the morning. So let's get everything lined up. Okay, cool. Now for my permanent bugbear, try and install the second hand. Again, I'm just going to go do that. Uh, last time it took me the best part of an hour and a half to do it. Hopefully this time it'll be a bit easier. Um, second time around. So uh, off we go. I'll see you in a bit. Well, this definitely gets easier with practice. I left everything set at 12 o'clock when I started doing this, so <laughs> according to this watch, uh, it took me about 7 minutes this time, which is a lot better than the 90 minutes it took me last time. Uh, one thing I did notice, I had a lot of difficulty with one of the hands, I tried the other hand, I don't know if maybe you know one hand was slightly damaged or maybe I just got lucky the second time, but hey. We got it on there. Um, I'm going to go actually uh, secure it down a little bit, but it's not fouling and everything's looking pretty good. So I'm super happy this time around because um, it was definitely a bear last time. So coolness. The next step before we case it is going to be to install the chapter ring. Uh, the chapter ring is two small feet and um, they're going to go, I don't know if you can see them here, but so they're going to slot into the holes on the movement holder at, on the hour and underneath at six o'clock. So just gonna oops, don't want to foul our second hand there. Okay, so I'm gonna do this not trying to film it because um, it's a bit fiddly with the camera in the way. So I'm gonna do this and come back. Okay, so the chapter ring's installed now, so we're ready to um, put the watch in the case. So in order to do that, we've got to remove the stem and the crown. Um, so that's going to be our next step. It's going to be the same procedure as we did before. Um, I'm going to uh, do this off camera just because it's going to be fiddly and I don't really want to mess with it too much. So, um, Okay, so we'll go do that and come back. Okay, we're ready to start trying to get it in the case. So there's two notches in the case. Uh, 
uh, one at nine o'clock, and one at three o'clock. And there's corresponding notches in the movement holder. So what we're going to try and do is um, get the nine o'clock into the case. Okay, so what I can do here, I'm try just slotting it on here. Okay, and then I can flip it. Actually make sure everything is fitting in properly. So there we go, just flip it over. And you can see that we're a little skew with here. So I want to just check that my notch is in the right place, and I think it is on the nine o'clock. And on the three o'clock, just not quite right there. So, and you can kind of look at it from the side and see if we got it. We did quite close. Really have to be careful not to touch the movement though. There we go. And we pushed it out on that side again. Okay. Just up on this side a bit too much. There we go. Okay. So I'm just looking at this from different angles uh, to make sure that the movement holder is seated, which I'm not necessarily sure it is here, to be honest with you. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that now. Um, what we're going to do next is insert the stem and crown. Um, so it's really the same procedure. We're going to gently kind of push it in engage until it clicks. Okay, and I can feel that winding now. Maybe you can hear that. So I think we're in pretty good shape now. Um, I can screw the crown down. Oops. Just catching on the finger cuts. So. Okay, and I'm just gonna screw that down. Should give us a. There we go. That's all the way down. Okay, so we're in good shape there. Um, our next um, thing is to put the gasket on. Now I've actually, I'm gonna add an extra step to uh, the instructions. I have a little bit of gasket grease. Um, and so this silicon grease helps to uh, give us some waterproofing. This doesn't come as part of the DIY watch kit. Uh, I got this from Esslinger, who are a watchmaker supply store. Um, so what we do is we basically uh, use a little bit of the grease on uh, the gasket and uh, just make sure that it's essentially all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to take off the finger cuts for this because hands are probably going to get greasy, dirty and grungy. Um, and I probably will want to use these finger cuts again. Um, okay, so the way we're going to do this is uh, I am going to use some tweezers and just kind of run it through the grease, get a little bit of cloth and wipe it around to make sure that it's all the way on the gasket. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to do that and come back. Okay, so I've got the gunky silicone grease, silicone grease on there. Um, hopefully that will help with waterproofing. There's another product I've seen that uses a sponge. Um, and that might be easier to actually apply, so I may try that in a future build. Um, but I think we're good to go. We're going to put the case back on now. Um, so just basically want to gently screw this on. Threading on now, I can feel. Okay, my magic ball, magic day ball. I will actually use the case back opener to close this up for real later, but right now I just want to get this closed up without too much pressure on it because I'm not sure, you know, I need to adjust the timing and everything else. And there we are. Okay. Now, the watch itself is now finished. Uh, obviously, there's still stuff to do. Um, the one thing that I do have to do is have a really neat strap for it. And uh, let's open that up and take a quick look. I'm probably going to make a little video on uh, fitting and sizing a strap. Um, but that's it for this one, I think. Um, I'm really pleased with this. Uh, I like the design of the DIY Watch Club pieces. Um, this, you know, actually looks like a fairly uh, well-designed uh, watch. I like the 3D effect of, of the two-part bezel. It's a little finicky getting it in there, but I think the end result is good. Um, so next up, we'll get the strap on, and then uh, we'll also look at um, getting, uh, getting it on a time grapher. I do have a leather strap that I can put on right now. Um, so I think I'll do that because then I can wear this tomorrow. And uh, the other thing is uh, the bezel. So um, let's get that fitted and then I think we're done. The next step is to install the bezel. So let's pull that out of the packaging. The bezel has uh, self-adhesive on there so we want to pull off the backing. And then the, the trick here is going to be to make sure that this is really well aligned. So I'm just going to pull off the backing for the adhesive. And then I want to make sure that I'm going to get this aligned exactly, because otherwise it's going to look a bit janky. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, our bezel's installed. Uh, one last thing is I'm going to put a leather strap on here and then later we'll put the steel bracelet on. It needs to be sized, so there's, you know, a fair bit to that. Um, so let's just put a strap on and we're done for now. And I'm really pleased with this. Really cool watch. Okay, so here's our finished watch on a strap. Good looking watch. Um... Pretty easy build. It took me a little under two hours and I was filming. You know, the camera sometimes gets in the way. And that was a 15 minute diversion to look for a washer. Uh, so I'm really pleased with this. Okay, we'll look at putting the steel strap on later. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for joining us and hope to see you next time. Okay, so let's be real. How does this actually stack up? Let's compare it against a, quote, real diver's watch, a 20-year-old Omega Seamaster. Um, the loom is actually better because the ceramic dial 
I kind of like the fact that the numerals are illuminated on that. Uh, the loom on the Omega lasts a little bit longer. I recently had it serviced by Omega and it's, it's a great watch. But I'm really happy with the DWC watch. I think this is a great product. And best of all, I built it myself. I'm a huge fan of dive watches. My first proper watch was an Omega Seamaster. I still have it. 21 years ago I got it. Went surfing with it for about 15 years. It's great. I love this watch. I feel like it stacks up pretty well. Anyway, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Take it easy.